Some people will do just about anything to make a buck. Just take the folks at Biomedical Tissue Services. This New Jersey-based company literally stole body parts from the deceased and sold them without their grieving family's consent. The infamous human harvesting case is so absurd, it sounds like something you'd see on Law & Order or CSI. But the heartless multi-million dollar scandal had devastating real-world consequences for everyone involved. It was late 2005 when the New York City Police Department first caught wind that something fishy was taking place at Biomedical Tissue Services, also known as BTS. After launching an official investigation, authorities uncovered alarming details about what BTS was doing behind closed doors. Essentially, BTS stole bodies from funeral homes, sliced and diced them, and harvested their bones and organs. After that, they'd flip them to medical companies for profit. The NYPD's investigation discovered that BTS got their hands on the body of a famous BBC broadcaster who passed away from cancer. They apparently stole his bones, skin, and tendons without his family's approval. Detectives also unearthed the corpse of a grandmother from Queens whose bones from the waist down had been swiped by BTS and replaced with PVC pipe. The man behind it all was Dr. Michael Mastromarino, the president of Biomedical Tissue Services and the mastermind of their criminal schemes. Before he worked with dead people, Mastro Marino dealt with living ones. He was a practicing dentist in the New York, New Jersey area before his life of crime. His attempt at living out the American dream didn't last long, though. His job allowed him to make a good life for himself and his family, but he threw it all away. His professional collapse ultimately came about because of a simple backache. Mastro Marino started experiencing regular back pain and he turned to Demerol to ease his discomfort. It wasn't long before the dentist was a full-on addict to the narcotic and people noticed something was up. He often showed up to work looking dead tired. He'd sweat profusely while treating patients and even started making simple mistakes in his dental practice. Mistakes that he'd never made before. One time, his assistant found him asleep while standing over a patient. On another occasion, he stumbled out of the bathroom with his pants around his ankles and collapsed onto the floor. He was even found on the bathroom floor with a hypodermic needle when he was supposed to be conducting an operation. Soon enough, everyone in the office knew that Dr. Master Marino was not well. The toothpaste finally hit the fan when the Demerol-addicted dentist made a major mistake during dental surgery that left the patient with a permanent droop on the left side of their face. Mastro Marino was arrested but managed to get his criminal charges dropped through some legal gymnastics. However, he was still forced to give up his dental license and the career he had worked so hard to cultivate was officially toasted. Before his dental practice imploded, Mastro Marino had co-authored a book about dentistry. There was one particularly interesting passage in the book that foreshadowed his transition into the world of tissue recovery. He had gone into detail about innovations in bone grafting and tissue engineering, marveling at the ability of modern doctors to replace the defective bones of their patients like never before. Dr. Master Marino had to start his professional life over from scratch. He couldn't just sit on his hands with a wife and two kids at home to support. He needed a new way to generate income and he needed it fast. Fortunately, Master Marino still had a few connections in his Rolodex. He contacted Regenerative Technologies, Incorporated, or RTI, one of the largest tissue banks in the United States. RTI helped the disgraced dentist jumpstart a new career as a human tissue harvester. Master Marino seemed to fill RTI's specific needs perfectly. They needed body parts, and he could carve up a corpse with the best of them. He went on some trial harvest to begin, and it became clear that it was a match made in harvesting heaven. RTI was thoroughly impressed with Master Marino's ability, and he earned his tissue harvesting license from the New York State Department of Health in 2002. That same year, he also got in trouble for continuing to practice dentistry without a license. But that didn't seem to bug his new employer. With the infrastructure set up by his good friends at RTI, Master Marino formed an entirely new business that centered on partnering with funeral homes to gain access to an endless stream of dead bodies. RTI's lawyers advised against doing business with the former dentist, but they didn't listen. His particular set of skills was helping them make money, and that's all that really mattered. 
While Master Marino was the pioneer of his new business, he wasn't working alone. He sought out funeral parlors to partner with in New York and the surrounding area. His collaboration with these mortuaries was straightforward. He'd pay undertakers a flat rate of $1,000 per body. He'd then treat the dead bodies like totaled cars and sell them for parts. By pocketing thousands of dollars for each body part, he ensured his return on that initial $1,000 investment was through the roof. Master Marino got involved with an embalmer and funeral home operator from Staten Island named Joseph Michelli, who'd help the ex-dentist get his hands on the precious corpses that would eventually turn into lots and lots of cash. In exchange for a cut of the profits, Nicelli agreed to send the bodies he collected for embalming or cremation to Master Marino to harvest the parts he would subsequently sell. Once the harvesting was done, Master Marino sent the corpses back Nicelli's way, and he'd do his best to make it look like nothing had ever happened. The families of the deceased never gave their consent for this transaction of body parts to take place. Often, they were none the wiser, but the families realized that something wasn't quite right on occasion. In 2003, for example, the daughter of someone Master Marino worked on noted that her father looked shorter in the coffin than he did when he was alive. It was risky business, but they didn't care, especially once business started booming. The company got so successful that Master Marino needed to bring in partners in crime to help with the workload. He put his feelers out into the medical community and linked up with a nurse from the Bronx named Lee Cruchetta. Cruchetta was in search of any opportunity to make a little cash on the side, and joining Master Marino's team was a no-brainer. The BTS crew was almost complete. They also brought a Brooklyn man named Christopher Alderassi on board. Both Cruchetta and Alderassi were assistants to Master Marino. They aided in the tissue extraction process and helped out by forging consent forms and falsifying medical documents to make it look like what they were doing was legit. Remember, organ and tissue harvesting are perfectly legal with the proper paperwork, licensing, and family consent. With RTI's blessing in their back pocket, biomedical tissue services could do their dirty work largely unchecked. Their convincing paperwork made it look like they operated within the confines of the law. Of course, that wasn't true in the slightest. The BTS guys snooped around low-income areas like Harlem, Newark, and Philadelphia to get the bodies themselves. They bring the corpses back to Nicelli's windowless funeral home in Brooklyn where they could discreetly conduct the harvesting. Once Master Marino had a fresh body, he'd call the others into work. While the operating table was situated on the first floor of the building, a nifty hydraulic elevator lifted it to a secret room on the second floor where the harvesters could dissect their subjects in peace. RTI was looking for long bones like arms and legs, so BTS had to work carefully not to make it obvious that the bones were missing. If a viewing was scheduled, they'd operate only on the lower half of the body extracting the leg bones and replacing them with PVC pipes. Most funeral home viewings only open the torso half of the casket, so nobody would ever know if the legs were made of plastic, especially under a pair of pants. Now, if the body was to be cremated, they weren't nearly as cautious as they hacked away at the bones and organs. Neighbors of the mortuary would often see vans parked on all sides of the building. They even reported occupied body bags lying on the sidewalk as BTS brought in a new shipment of involuntary donors. Residents from all over the neighborhood could hear the banging and clanging. On several occasions, the harvesters operated late into the night, but no one ever said a word to the cops about their suspicious activities. The BTS boys couldn't help but get a little sloppy as their workload had become almost overwhelming. They were never lacking a body to dissect, which meant they had little time to worry about keeping it down or cleaning up after themselves. It also meant that they were raking in cash. By 2003, they were apparently making something in the ballpark of ten to $15,000 a body. Funeral parlors were practically begging BTS to take their corpses to get their $1,000 fee. The crackpot harvesting team was regularly trading body bags for money bags. Dr. Master Marino was making more money than he'd ever dreamed. However, he had done so at the expense of following industry standards. As BTS started making more money, they became increasingly disinterested in playing by the rules. Funeral homes are supposed to ensure their corpses are being stored under certain conditions. BTS ignored that. Bodies being harvested are supposed to be operated on within 24 hours of death. 15 if they're left uncooled. BTS ignored that too. Most importantly of all, funeral parlors must make sure the corpses they're dealing with aren't too old or stricken with some disease. It was BTS's total disregard for the health of the bodies they harvested that ultimately got the better of them. If a corpse had cancer, they were supposed to reject them from the undertaker. But but undertakers were stubborn. They didn't care if a dead body was sick, they just wanted their $1,000 share. After a while, these bad bodies started getting through BTS's defenses and right onto the operating tables. Master Marino and the crew stopped caring about industry regulations. They just cared about getting the next body and flipping it for a paycheck. 
One of the most high-profile corpses that passed through the BTS operation was the body of the late Alistair Cook, a beloved BBC broadcaster whose television career spanned four decades before his death in 2004. Cook's daughter, Susan Kittredge, sent her deceased father to a funeral home in Harlem that marketed itself as providing the highest quality services at the lowest rate. She was looking for a simple cremation, nothing more. Someone came in the middle of the night to collect Cook's body. Instead of returning to the parlor to cremate the remains, the corpse was diverted to biomedical tissue services for harvesting. Master Marino and his lackeys forged the medical documents to make it look like harvesting Cook's body parts was the plan all along. They changed his age from 95 to 85, and they drew up phony consent forms that Kittredge never actually touched. Not only had BTS lied to get a hold of Alistair Cook's corpse, they also chose to ignore the fact that he had a diseased heart and cancerous bones. Despite their obvious defects, they happily accepted his body parts and then sold them without batting an eye. It wasn't until Christmas of 2005 that Kittredge found out about the elaborate deception. She had received the so-called remains of her father and then moved on with her life as any person would. Little did she know her father was not exactly all there. Brooklyn police clued her in. They believed Cook's body had been stolen during the cremation process. By that time, investigators were already hot on BTS's trail, and their scheme was starting to unravel. Master Marino's downfall was initiated when Nicelli sold his funeral home. The new owners called in the cops to take a look at the secret room BTS had been using to carve up the bodies they stole. While everything in the parlor was technically legal when taken at face value, Assistant DA Josh Hanshap found it all very suspicious, so he kept digging. He searched far and wide for some evidence of criminal activity, but the smoking gun he needed was sitting right on his desk. Hanshaft soon realized that Master Marino and others had totally and completely falsified the heaping pile of BTS paperwork he was tirelessly reviewing at the company. None of them had gone through the proper channels to obtain the consent necessary to carry out the harvesting procedures they performed daily. BTS had manually altered the ages of those harvested, and the cause of death was changed to make the corpses appear healthy. It was all in pursuit of cold hard cash, which they made a ton of while in business. The New York Times estimated that the biomedical tissue services brought in $4.6 million from its body harvesting scam. When the details of the scheme went public, people lost their minds. Panicked families wondered if dear old grandpa had been tampered with without their knowledge. Perfectly healthy people feared they might have received diseased implants stolen by BTS and sold to medical companies without any due diligence. The general public found themselves confronted by the icky reality of what happens to their bodies behind closed doors after they die. Dr. Master Marino was left out to dry by pretty much everyone he had ever done business with. RTI and the other medical companies bankrolling his operation washed their hands of the situation. Master Marino himself claimed innocence, but the mountain of forged documents with his name on it said otherwise. The FDA shut down BTS, and any tissue processors that had been customers of biomedical tissue services had to recall the implants that were already out in the wild. One transplant patient got hit with a slew of nasty health complications after receiving infected tissue from BTS. Another woman tore her ACL due to a faulty BTS tendon, and one poor fellow from Ohio contracted HIV and hepatitis C after getting bone implants from Master Marino's sleazy company. Scarred by her now ex-husband's criminal exploits, Barbara Master Marino unveiled her personal experiences with the dentist turned deviant. She wrote everything in a tell-all book called The Body Snatcher's Wife. Apparently, there had been plenty of warning signs about the guy even early on in their marriage. But love is blind, as they say, so she let it be until she was forced to confront the truth. The love of her life was a madman. Master Marino's own kids wouldn't even speak to him after his schemes were plastered all over the nation. The evil doctor ultimately pleaded guilty to his crimes and spent the remainder of his years behind bars. He and his wife agreed to pay the nearly $5 million he generated at BTS to the district attorney's office, who subsequently distributed those funds to the victims of his misdeeds. Just five years into his prison sentence, Master Marino bit the dust. The former dental surgeon passed away from complications stemming from liver cancer. This actually came as a relief to his wife and kids, who viewed his premature demise as a fresh start. As for Michael Master Marino, his passing begs the question, was he a registered organ donor? Click here to watch one of these next videos.